Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and today the sun is shining and you know what that means? That means I'm gonna film a video and you know what video I should be filming? I should be filming something to do with the snowathon because I meant to make two videos about that but I'm only gonna end up making one and you know the snowathon's done in two days but does it look like I'm gonna finish these two books in two days? There's my marker in one. There's my marker in the other. Does it look like I'm gonna finish those in two days when I'm finishing them in two weeks? Probably not. But, you know, I'm going to do my best. And I'm going to make a pretty, pretty video with lots of fancy editing. It's going to be beautiful. And it's going to come out way before this one comes out. But you know what? I need to film something today. Because the sun is shining. And you know what the sun doesn't do in the winter? Shine. And I would like to have one of my videos during the winter ever have decent lighting in it. You know? That would be nice. So I'm going to do something that I can do anytime, and that is a book tag. And I recently saw on Reads with Rachel's channel a tag called the Books and Bakes. Ba 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 called the Books and Bakes tag. And I was like, this is so me. I like books. I like bakes. Hence, this. This is a bowl of cookie dough. You know what I don't have the energy to do today? Bake the cookies. I made this cookie dough like five days ago, and I've just been eating it. Gradually, because <clears throat> I've also found out that if I don't cook the cookies, my family doesn't scarf them down in the day, and I get to have cookies for cookie dough for a week, whereas they'll eat all the cookies in one day. You know, the person who made the cookies should get to eat the cookies. Anyway, I'm also going to be drinking my Diet Coke because uh, I'm in quite a bit of pain today. Sometimes hydration helps with that. I'm really sorry about this weird accent. Sometimes my voice goes weird when I talk quickly and with energy. I'm not purposely talking with a weird southern accent. I'm just purposely talking quickly. And that's just sort of happening. Anyway, here's the questions. <laughs> First one is, oh, the original, by the way, is from Life is a Page Turner. It was made, oh, it was only made a couple of months ago, on October 15th of this year. I really love her intro to it, by the way. It's quite funny, her eating a cookie and just staring at the camera. <laughs> so you should totally check out her video. But uh, the first question is, cupcakes. Name a collection of short stories, poems, or anthologies where you couldn't read just one section and had to go back for another. Obviously, the poetry collection that I talk about a lot is, you can't see it, it's not in frame, but it's up there. It's called The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one. It's feminist, angry feminist stuff. I'm doing the stupid accent again. Stop it. Um, I just bought, oh, but you can see this one. The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one. This is the third in her little series of which the witch doesn't burn in this one is the second. And this just arrived in the mail. The Princess Save Yourself in this one, which I'm very excited to read. I read The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one a little bit ago and I vlogged it. So that'll come out someday. But I'm very, very excited to read this. They're... The way they're formatted is <laughs> kind of in a sort of story format, which I really like, and it's very fantasy-ish, so it's very natural to continue reading and read the whole thing through to get the whole story sort of thing through the poems, rather than just read a couple of poems here and there. Two is Lemon Pound Cake. Name a book that has 400 pages or more that you considered a comfort read and a classic. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. mm. mm. Not sure I would consider any of these classics. I mean, these these two are kind of classic for me because I reread them a lot. Or they're not classic by normal standards. They're super big. They're like seven to eight hundred pages, and I just reread them when I'm feeling down because there's a lot of found family and sweet romance and a lot of love going around in those books. So it makes me feel loved and like part of a family when I read them. And then this one over here is a very nice comfort read. It has basically the same elements. Red Velvet Cake. Name a book that you thought was one thing but ended up being something completely different, which as um, Reads with Rachel said, the reason that that prompt is what it is. Hopefully I'm not condescending here because everybody knows this already, but maybe some people don't because I didn't know it until fairly recently until I actually made a Red Velvet Cake is that red velvet cake is just chocolate with red food dye in it and it's easier to get chocolate to turn red than to get white to turn red because white will just turn pink but if you already have a lot of darkness it'll turn red and it's considered a flavor because it's almost always paired with cream cheese which has a very strong flavor but it's really just chocolate anyway a book that ended up different actually some of my current reads like this i 
thought I would enjoy this more. I'm having a hard time getting through it because the main character is extremely annoying and I would much rather be in the perspective of the secondary character who is a nerd and a geek and the main character is kind of mean to her for that and that doesn't make me feel very nice. The next prompt number four is chocolate chip cookie dough. Name a book or series that you can read over and over again even though you know that it's bad for you. By the way, I think 99,999 out of 100,000 eggs in the US and in several other Western countries uh, do not have salmonella. So the likelihood you will get salmonella from the rare occasions on which you eat your raw eggs in your cookie dough, not very likely. But anyway, things that I reread that I kind of consider bad for me. Some things I've been rereading recently are some romances, specifically 1950 set romances. I'll put the author up, but I really like her because she does a lot of found family stuff and familial bonds are really strong. They're romances. The main relationship the book is focused on is is a heterosexual couple and they're not always the healthiest romantic relationship. Some of them really are, like a Scandal in Spring is one. That I, that I think has a really healthy one. Devil in Spring, also, has, has a pretty healthy one. But some of them have less healthy ones that are more, the guy's super bossy and like gets his way and everything and blah blah blah. And within the context of the book, the guy is actually really nice and doesn't actually use his power over the woman badly most of the time. <laughs> uh, but, uh, when you translate that to teenagers or young people or just otherwise impressionable people who might read these in the real world, I know that having these things romanticized and bad power dynamics can really make it hard to combat rape, rape culture. I know I'm talking about a very serious subject with my mouthful, but sometimes that just helps make it easier to talk about. I read them anyway. I don't wreck them. You might have noticed I don't talk about these on my channel because of that negative quality. But I read them myself because they just really help when I'm depressed. And I just focus on the positive aspects and the found family and the deep love that you get once you get past those negative things. And it makes me feel better when I'm sad. Then we have number five. But apple pie on a mode. New book. It was really good but could have been better with a little bit of ice cream. So, a little bit of ice cream. So I'm guessing that means a book that just need a little extra something. Just something was a bit off and would have been like massively better if it had just been a little different. I'm trying to think of the books that I've read recently because I just read a bunch of books in November. And I'd like to talk about some different books from the ones that I've been bringing up in tags for forever. So let me see. Well, let's do Sorcery of Thorns. That's one I read recently and I really enjoyed it. I loved it. But I recognize, because of other people's reviews and also because of my own discernment, I recognize that the reason I enjoyed that so much was because of a lot of very subjective aspects and because it reminded me of other characters that I had joined in other books and because it just really gave me my really library junkie enjoyment. And so I noticed when I was read it that if it had had a more convincing plot and if some of the plot elements had been handing, handled more realistically, then I wouldn't just say it was a good book that I enjoyed. Then I would be able to recommend it as a great book that I think loads of people would enjoy. Then we have number six, gingerbread cookies. Do you like your gingerbread cookies crunchy or soft? And this has two parts. So part one is if you like your cookies soft, name a book that was squishy in the middle, but the beginning and the end were really good. And if you like your cookies crunchy or more like ginger snaps, name a book that you finished, but you wanted to throw in a wall or snap. Um, and I don't like gingerbread cookies. They're too strong for me. I, I'm very a bland person. But I like cookies in general to be soft and squishy in the middle. Ah, uh, maybe this one. Tanya Huff's Summon the Keeper. I think it did do a fairly good job of setting up the mystery and how things came to be. And it made good sense and introduced the characters nicely. But it went on a bit in the middle. And how they got from the beginning to the end wasn't... Wasn't great. It was okay. The middle was definitely the less good part. The beginning and the end were the better parts. Number seven is brownies. 
Are you a corner piece or a middle piece? Uh, if you're a corner piece, name a book that starts off strong and then comes apart. If you're a middle piece, name a book that kept you in the feels the entire time. I love all brownie pieces, but uh, I do have some preference for the corners. So, stuff starts off strong and then comes all apart. See, the thing is, I tend to DNF books like that, so I don't remember them very well. I can't remember, so I'm just going to answer part two instead. A uh, book that kept you in the feels the entire time. Basically the same ones. These ones, my feel-good ones. Oh, these ones. These ones gave me very strong feelings the entire time. I adore the prose in these, which definitely helps, you know, when the plot isn't perfect or the characters aren't perfect. The prose can really save it, but in this case, I like the prose and also the characters and the plot and everything so these ones give me feels the whole way through make me feel really nostalgic uh, for my childhood even though I didn't really read books like that in my childhood I really wish I had they would have been extra enjoyable I think when I was a kid number eight is birthday cake uh, name a book series or an author that you feel like keeps coming out with a book every year and obviously uh, Nora Roberts slash JD Robb does she comes out with two JD Robb books and I think at least one Nora Roberts book every year she is prolific I think she's also rich because her books sell really well and she sold so many of them. But also there are authors like Sarah J Maas who are under contract and they like have to keep pumping them out. But usually I'm at a loss for my favorite authors coming out with new books. Usually they take about two years. Number nine is Carrot Cake. Name a book that sounded healthy for you but it ended up being unhealthy either with content or put you in a reading slump. Once again I'm gonna bring up this thing has put me into a reading slump because I really want to finish it before I start other things because I need to finish it because I'm reading it for a readathon, but I just don't want to. But uh, other things that did that, well, I was quite excited for A Court of Frost and Starlight because while I knew it was a novella, I thought it would have a plot. It did not have a plot. <laughs> and uh, it kind of actually brings out the worst of a lot of the things that people who don't like Sarah J. Mass's stuff complain about. She overused a lot of words repetitively, like she went into the whole male-female for Faye thing a lot. And then the sex scene was just really getting close to the whole Fifty Shades of Grey bad writing level. So, yeah. I was looking forward to it a lot and then it was kind of disappointing. But I did like there was basically a Christmas episode with all our favorite characters giving gifts to each other, which, and you know, having snowball fights, which I'm, I'm pretty happy about. But in general, books that I try out and then turn out to be hurtful to me are ones with character death of characters who are really, um, cl the author brings them really close to your heart and then they die. It's really sad and hurts me. So I just really try really hard to avoid those and I read spoilers and everything so that doesn't happen. And the last part of the tag is to tag some people you would love to share baked goods with and for this one I'm going to uh, try to mention the people that I didn't tag in my last tag video which I don't remember what that was. But anyway, uh, Troy Tal of course because he's one of my uh, best booktube buddies. I think I tagged Kelsey Reads in the last one. Reads with Rachel has already done it. Who else is on my list? That Disney chick. Um, oh, she reads. I tagged Nicole last time. You know, I would love to sit down to tea and cookies with Claudia from Spinster's Library. She would be great for conversation. That's a fair number, so I'll leave it there. I will be linking these people below as well as the original creator of this tag and uh, Reads with Rachel because she's the one I got the was become aware of the tag from. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you're watching and have not been tagged, I tag you. I'm gonna eat some more cookie dough now and also some lunch. Bye!